it's very difficult, but that's part of the fun. We thought we had a really good game plan that kind of went out the window in the first 10 minutes. We weren't expecting everything to go down so fast. The red team's been pretty brutal to us today, though. Right now, we're recovering from the rocky start. Overall, doing pretty well. I love it here. It's just a lot of fun. Evacuate the skiff. This is only a drill. <laughs> For the third year in a row, the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland hosted the regional finals with the winner moving on to San Antonio, Texas to compete for the national title. This year's competition had the final eight colleges focusing on the operational aspects of managing and protecting an electronic voting system for the fictional country, Hakistan. Pakistan had recently been liberated by a U.S.-led coalition of international forces and is having their first democratic election. U.S. military forces were on hand to provide election oversight and security. Early intel reported terrorists were planning cyber attacks in an attempt to disrupt the voting process and possibly alter the final outcome. Good morning, everyone. I'm the point of contact for your team. Who is the team captain here? That's Mr. Shirley. Very good, very good. Right. I'm requested to see the commander. This way. Thank you. And so one of my primary duties is to help you succeed. Thank you, sir. Each college team represented a group of civilian contractors responsible for protecting one of the voting district's network's assets. They report to the U.S. military and are responsible for all the business activities and IT staff must deal with in the real world. Being former military, I've, I've been around the military lingo, but he's still intimidating when anytime you walk in front of a colonel. Outstanding. The briefing went well, though, I believe, and we managed to pull off some of the goals today. Not all the briefings went well, though. Right, so someone could get it, insider attack, eventual compromise. You understand this is serious? It cannot happen again. The key card got left in the classified area. It got written up, lost some points, and learned how not to store the key card. In this competition, the blue team with the most points wins. Scoring was based on each team's ability to defend assets and how they respond to injects. Injects are tasks that simulate real-world IT business activities. Some of them are kind of difficult, uh, especially if they rely on previous injects. The inject that attacked us took advantage of some scripts that we left open. They started running a script on our screen, and it said, ha, 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 over and over again. <laughs> so we had to shut the system down. The injects come from headquarters, but the ha, ha, ha script was the handiwork of the terrorists, otherwise known as the Red Team. You're one of us. You know what to do. <laughs> the one thing that was changed this year, they got rid of the Red Cell physical penetration. It's not one of those things that is an everyday occurrence anymore. So taking that out of play allows them to concentrate on being able to say, I need to research this server and know how it works for the morning. Yeah, and port uh, 1605. Not only did these college students get the chance to test their knowledge and skills in a real life competition, but they also got an opportunity to network with industry professionals in a career fair the day before the event. The talent that we see here and the kids that I've interviewed today have those core capabilities and core competencies in the cyber domain, whether you're dealing with an offensive problem or a defensive problem, the specific training they've received from the school. But what I also look for in this future talent set is their ability to communicate. When we attend cyber competitions and symposiums like this one, we get individuals that, are, that come and approach the, the tables and they want to talk a lot about their background and how they, they sell themselves in terms of you know, what they can do and what they can bring to the organization. And then we have some that are interviewing us as well. How are we different from the other companies here? How are we different from other companies in our marketplace? So we get a good mixture of both. You know, we're interviewing them and they're interviewing us. The day before the job fair, students, researchers, and hackers had the opportunity to listen to top authorities speak on the topic of safe and secure elections. Thank you all so very much for coming out here today, and uh, especially for the, the interest everyone's been showing in this topic of uh, securing elections, because I think this is one of the places where society is being especially challenged right now by, by technological change.
Cybersecurity threats are becoming so pervasive that it's really everybody's business to know something about them and how to respond to them. We especially worry about things like the uh, like like critical industries, power grid, critical infrastructure um, becoming accessible over the internet and then converted into something that you can electronically attack from anywhere in the world. Um, the voting system is a great example of that kind of critical infrastructure. That's why it's an, an ideal choice uh, for something for a, a competition like this. In 2005, 2006, when the internet bubble kind of burst, there was a big exit from computer science and computer security for that matter. And over the last couple of years, I've seen a very strong resurgence. Everybody's coming back. Every major discipline realizes that computer science is fundamental to everything that they do. And the more computer science, the more computer systems are out there, the more security we need to protect them. I think that the skill set required to defend systems includes hacking offensively, and if we don't teach people what their attackers are doing, there's no way they can hope to try to defend against it. The best way to train is hands-on, and I think that putting them in a competition in an environment where they have to think creatively and be nimble and go with whatever they encounter is a very good way to train them. On day two, after some late night meetings and hopefully sleep, the teams were preparing for more intense hacking from the red team. Last night we spent a whole bunch of time working on uh, the badges, which as you can see mine is currently disconnected because they were hacking through it. Um, so that's fun. Uh, but we spent a whole bunch of time uh, duplicating the network on with our stuff. We have an ASA box from our club funds. so. We replicated the network and kind of figured out how to fix the problems that we had on day one. Getting better prepared for the red team is a no-brainer for everyone here. But would they be prepared for what awaits them when they meet the election judge? I'm responsible to the prime minister of this country to run a good election. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what happened yesterday, how's today, what's happening? Um, sure, yeah. Um... Wait. Ne, this was the prime minister. She is absolutely sure that one of the candidates is trying to steal the election. You're my guy. Tell me. It's we true. have been informed. Yes. And we are working um, yes. and distributing manpower where it's necessary to make sure that um, this candidate is... Um, Which candidate was it? Um, unfortunately, we can't disclose that. Close the door, please. I was instructed not to delay the name of the candidate. By whom? Um, the military contract. The military? Yes. So the military is trying to steal my election? Not at all, sir. I do not know the name. I know the party. You know the party. What is it? Um, not sure I can tell you that, sir. I was hoping it would be friends. I was really hoping it would be friends. I started to notice halfway through that he was trying to get information that the event really didn't want me to disclose to him. In my head, I said, I can't tell you this. And that was something that was hard because you're in a game and you feel like you have to tell all the information everyone asks to get max points. And that's usually how it's run. You know, can you reiterate all this information back to someone? A second visit with the election judge gets more interesting when the team captains are accompanied by the colonel. I walked in front of the voting booths a few hours ago uh, and uh, what I saw just shocked me. There are all these votes for a party that doesn't even exist in your district. How could that be? There were huge vote differences. So I need from you to tell me, are there some irregularities? Have there been votes posted that should not have been posted? Have you any evidence of this? Um, yes, from our side, there has been... Um, what? As <laughs> there has been? You're substantiating irregularities? Uh, yes, I, I, have to, yes? I have to report that. Has there been a report of this? Well, I, I, I think you may be overstating the situation here. We, we, we know we're being, that there's an attempt to attack us. That the, but but we're, this we're, is different from substantiation. No, he's not substantiating from the that you have IT not, professionals. He's not substantiating that you have not had a fair, you can't have a fair election. Hmm. I got a good chance to see how my role as a IT person was not to overlap with the role of a diplomat. 
and luckily the colonel seemed to be on my side during the meeting, um, so he helped me dodge a lot of bullets, to be honest. But we definitely got a good talk in after that. About things that is not your job to talk about. All the team captains met with the election judge and the colonel throughout the day. And the injects, which are supposed to simulate normal IT activities, got a bit more challenging. The goal? Find the correct message by navigating the halls from behind closed doors. So, After two days of arrests, you've attempted to leak classified information. Protests. Traitor! 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 And of course, voting. The competition came to a close. With no active scoreboard to follow throughout the event, the colleges had to wait until after dinner for the points to be tallied and the winner to be announced. Two hours after the final horn sounded, the teams were caught off guard by what happened next. For the first time ever, we have a tie for first place. In the event of a tie, the team with the highest raw inject score will win. In second place, a team making their very first appearance ever in the Mid-Atlantic Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition is North Carolina State University. And this particular team won the Mid-Atlantic Regionals in 06, 07. Both those years, they went on to the national and they placed second, Millersville University. Yeah.